Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So, as you know, I'm away on holiday with the family this week, so there's been a few less videos. Um, so, what I thought I'd do, because there's been a request from a few people, uh, was give you a bit of a tour around the space where I, where I paint, where I film, where I edit, and where I play my games. So, as you can see behind me there, all the lights just kind of catching it there, uh, this is a Handy's Geek Cave. That was a sign my wife bought, me, bought for me for Christmas, so that hangs proudly on the inside of the door there. So what I'll do is I'll flip the camera around and I'll take you on a bit of a tour of the room. Here we've got the door here as we come through. And then the first thing you'll see in the corner is I have um, a, a tripod light there, which is like a soft box light. Now I do have two of these. These are the ones I used to use when I was filming in the garage. And when I'm filming at the table, I tend just to lift this one forward. So it kind of comes forward near where my table is and stuff. And then I do have another one in the corner of the room there as well. And they seem to do pretty well enough. I do have sort of ceiling lights, but I tend not to put those on. And my camera is now calibrated um, for that amount of light. So now I'm not going to get in too close here. But as you can see, this is where I chart all of the different videos I'm going to do. I've purposely taken a lot of stuff off, the, um, off next month, just so I don't give too much away. But you can see, this is how I organise what, uh, what I'm going to film, what my schedule is. Um, when things have got to be up by and then sort of cross them off when they're done um, which makes it really helpful and we get round got a little bit of a, a selection of cigars here that I kind of I almost collect them and smoke very little if I'm honest I, I might have a couple in the summer when I have a bit of a barbecue or something like that but yeah for, for <laughs> more uh, more kind of collected them now over time but what I've got here is some of my uh, Aristea models not Aristea sorry these ones are mine, uh, Infinity Infinity models. So these are the ones from Operation Cold Front that you probably have seen either on the channel or on my Instagram and things like that. So they've been painted up. There's a couple at the back there left to finish, but that's those ones there. Then we've got this is the area where I sit and edit my videos. So yeah, I've got I've got three monitors here, which um, to be honest is, is it goes back to when I used to do a lot of PC gaming and stuff. Um, so I didn't I didn't buy the three monitors purely for doing the editing. I already had them when I started doing the YouTube channel. To be honest. Um, so yeah, this is where I sit and edit, they're, they're not, nothing fancy monitors, um, but they, they certainly do the job. Little C920 webcam there, which I used to use quite a lot in the past before I got sort of capture cards and things for my PC, uh, and when, before I got better cameras. Absolutely up to the job if anybody's wanting to just kind of start out or do some live streaming, those are great cameras to use. Um, I've got my Elgato stream, uh, stream Deck there, you'll see me using this when I'm doing my Monday night live streams. It allows me to sit uh, over here where I do my filming and still control the stream. Uh, it's really useful for that. I also use it when I'm doing any kind of multi-camera sort of battle reports as well. Um, just I've got a couple of little sort of boxes here just with bits of memory cards, batteries, microphones, that kind of stuff in. Got my little Amazon Alexa that sometimes I use to play my stuff. And then as we come around here, you'll see this is where I do my airbrushing. So, this is, if we've got enough light down here, we'll see. This is my airbrush. I might get a better shot from the side, actually. This is my airbrush compressor that I use. Just, I think they're pretty standard. Most people will have a compressor like this one. Um, and I've just got some, um, some bottled water in there as well. And that's actually, it's, it's condenser water from a tumble dryer, just filtered out. Um, and I sometimes use that to mix my paints as well. But I've got one of these um, sort of spray booths <laughs> Those are my uh, my reading glasses that I use for um, for any close-up work when I'm painting. Um, a tip I got from from Luke at Luke's APS. Uh, much better than trying to sort of hunch over a, uh, a magnifying glass. I found it works quite well. Um, and I've got a couple of airbrushes now. So I've got a video coming up later on about sort of the difference between cheap and branded airbrushes. So this airbrush is the one I got with the compressor, uh, and it's actually served me pretty well to be honest. Most of the models I've painted, I've painted with this one. And then more recently, I got this one, which is a harder and a Steinbeck, and it's one of the uh, Cult of Paint. Let's see if I can get some light on that one. The uh, Cult of Paint e Evolutions. And actually, there's, there's definitely a difference in quality between them, but I'll leave it for the video to let you know whether there's any uh, difference in the finish. Um, I've, I've fitted a small light, so you can see there's a switch on the side here. This is just a little LED strip from Ikea, so I switch it on. It just kind of gives me a bit of light inside and helps when I'm painting. Um, the window out of the garden. 
and then we kind of come around into the bulk of the room. Um, tripod there with my other camera on that I just use for doing some different kinds of stuff. Now in the corner here, I've got these kind of shelving units. This is my little light box that I use. So most of the, if there's any models on my thumbnails that I've taken the photograph inside this little light box, I think it was about six or seven pound on Amazon. It wasn't particularly expensive, but it absolutely does the job. It's got a little LED light strip in the top with a USB lead that comes off. I just plug that USB lead into a little power bank and it means it's quite portable and I can use it where I want. And then in these shelving units, I've got things like, uh, let's have a look. These are all my, my Space Wolves that I'm currently painting up at the moment. Some Aristea models there that are uh, mid-paint job. I also um, have uh, sort of kill team terrain, bits and pieces of that uh, in the bottom here as well. Uh, but one thing that you'll notice is, that, is a, I'll just show you that one again. I mentioned before about having my kind of Aristea stuff and that in here. Anything that is kind of part way through painting or is ready to be painted, I like to just store it away. It stops me getting sort of sidetracked by the amount of stuff I have to do. As you know, I do plenty of different bits of painting for the channel. So I like to keep the area sort of clear. So this is the bit you're probably more familiar with. This is my shelves with all of my games on that you kind of see in most of my videos. We'll do a little bit more close up so you can see some of the stuff that's up here. So I kind of took round the back. Here's my, my wireless router. We've got the uh, Shadow War Armageddon there as well. We've got Silver Tower, Blood Bowl, and then the Hero Quest that I got probably is about it. Sort of nine year old kid. We've also got a few models that you might not actually see on the on the videos. So these are my Star Wars Legion Rebels. They're just kind of hiding out in the background there. And then I've got my, my Stormtroopers and Vader. Uh, they're tucked away. And then I've also got a small Brewers uh, Guild Ball team as well. Um, tucked away in here, you'll see I've got my uh, AT-80. But what you might not be able to see from the videos if I move this out of the way, is I've got a couple of cuddly toys in the back there. Uh, sort of uh, from the new Star Wars movies as well, so they get tucked away in the back, not always seen. Um, now, at the bottom here, I'll come back to that, that black box that you might not be able to see with the light. Um, that's where most of my painting stuff is, and I like to keep all my painting stuff hidden away. More so because of, I've got to sort of keep the area clean for when I'm filming, but we'll come on to that in a second. So we've got Last Night on Earth down here, Mars Attacks. We've got a few games tucked away down here. So we've got uh, a, couple of the Arist uh, a couple of the Infinity Boxes, we've got Key Forge, we've got Dreadball, we've got Drop Fleet Commander. Um, there's Shadow Tactics, which is a game that got sent to me for review uh, for a Kickstarter that was live recently. And to be honest, the, the rule book they sent me was so difficult to understand, I had to tell them that I couldn't review it. So. Um, this was just a prototype, there's prototype bits in it and stuff. So yeah, it just shows that I don't always sort of review everything that gets sent to me and I don't always accept everything that people offer to me. So yeah, that was one of them. Um, I'm sure the, the rule book's been tidied up a lot now since the, the Kickstarter finished, but at the time when I got it, it, it was basically, basically unplayable without somebody really teaching you what they knew what they were doing. Uh, we've got Shared Spire, Go Chosen, Rumble Slam, Smash Up, and we've also got Crowdfunder card game tucked in there as well. We've got my Walking Dead All Out War Kickstarter edition, which is really the thing that started off this channel. Um, and uh, yeah, I still enjoy that game now. We've got Resident Evil board game and tucked behind that as well. We've got all the expansions and things as well that I got with it. We've got the Rise and Fall of Anvalor game, which I really enjoy playing. There's a review of that on the channel. You'll also see that behind some of these, there's, there's also sort of models or extra games Tuck behind them as well, so a whole host of stuff. And then I've also got Star Wars Legion. We've also got um, some of my um, uh, pop vinyls. So a couple here from Gears of War 4. And then there's a few here that are part of Suicide Squad. So we've got sort of Deadshot and Boomerang and uh, Diablo and Katana there. I've got my, uh, <laughs> my Darth Vader helmet that my wife bought me for Christmas as well that my, uh, my little boy uh, was a little bit scared of, but he's, he's soon getting used to it now. And then um, we've got a few more uh, pop vinyls. I'll just um, sneak around here so I can get a better shot. Um, we've got Superman, Batman, we've got Wonder Woman, we've got Green Arrow, we've got Flash, and we also have um, Daredevil. 
and I've also got like a little USB, um, it's like a desk hoover thing uh, with R2-D2. So we've got um, Necromunda Underhive there, we've got Kill Team, we've got Space Hulk and <laughs> Dreadfleet, the game that uh, everybody gave a real bad press to. Um, and then I've got here, I've got my uh, Kings of War Vanguard, my Basileans here, and my Abyssals that you'll have seen on some of the battle reports as well. And then games down this side, we've got Dead Zone, which is a game I always enjoy playing. Um, I need to get more stuff painted for it to get it on the channel, really, but maybe I should, um, I should invite some people along to come and play that one, because I really do like that game, but lack of painted stuff is what stops me putting on the channel, I think. Uh, Aristea, which I'm also really enjoying. And again, I'm busy painting some stuff up for that as well, so we should see that on the channel soon. Then I've just recently, only this weekend, been sent Core Space um, by Battle Systems. And this is a review copy, it's not quite out yet. I don't even think the Kickstarters have got their stuff yet. Um, but with me going away, I've not had a chance to sort of unbox everything and build it together. However, what I have seen of it is pr really promising. We've got Gears of War, the board game. And then we've got a number of bits and pieces along the bottom here. So I've got Dreadball first edition there. It's the, the box of my Space Wolves. I've also got um, Project Pandora, which is one of the first kind of box sort of standalone dungeon crawlers that Mantic did many, many years ago, set in the sci-fi world. We've got Res Arcana, which again is another game that's been sent to me for review. Um, and we'll be doing a review of that as soon as I can get it to the table and get some games in. And then we've also got Zombies as well, a little box board game there. Uh, number of books here. Some of them you might have seen on live streams and stuff, but we've got uh, the Hellboy um, Library Edition there, which is a volume one. Um, I've got a Star Wars book there that actually just gives me some ideas for terrain and things. We've got all of the, um, what they call now, the indexes for 40k. <laughs> I bought those and uh, the game pretty much went uh, changed to codexes before I even had a chance to use any of them. And then we've got a number of bits of Batman, Walking Dead. Um, we've got uh, Ash Barker's Last Days there as well, which was kindly given to me by Anth from Revenant Tabletop Gaming. Um, there's my Vanguard boot in there as well. And uh, a few bits and pieces. Coming across, we've got Arkham Horror here, the card game. Um, we've also got Zombie Babies, which is a game, again, it was coming to Kickstarter and it didn't actually fund, but the, the game itself was pretty good. I did a review of it on my channel. My channel was much, much smaller then and maybe I couldn't give it the help that it deserved really, but it was an awesome game and I still play it now, to be honest. Uh, Hostage Negotiator, which I've also reviewed in the channel. And then I've got a lot of expansion boxes for Aristea, which were sent to me by Corvus Belly and they will be uh, in a video as well when I get round to painting stuff up to review for Aristea. And I've also got uh, love letters you can see there, just tucked away. Coming across here, we've also got um, the legendary Marvel Studios game. There's a Wild West Exodus, um, I think it's, is it Battle at Red Oak or something like that it's called. Cards Against Humanity, Highlander and the Expansion. There is a, a box there which is one of these kind of terrain, not terrain crates, sorry, the, you know, the loot box type things. You get the surprise boxes you get every month, a little bit like... Um, like the model box ones as well. This is from a different company. It's been sent to me for review, but increasingly I'm becoming kind of, I'm not really sure that they're, for me personally, I'm not sure they're worth the money. So I'm a little bit reluctant to kind of just put a video up and give them a load of bad press and that kind of stuff. Cause they're suitable for certain people, but for me personally, it's, I don't think it's really my bag. Uh, Death Traps Dungeon, which we did on a Monday night live stream. We've got Dungeon Saga here. Betrayal of House on the Hill. We've got The Walking Dead, here's Negan, which I really enjoy. And also I've got my uh, my Thor statue, which my, my brother and sister-in-law bought me for Christmas this year. So yeah, I've got some nice stuff kind of just to put on my shelves. And then tucked away down the side here, which you never see on camera, I've got a painting light there. I've also got my little battle foam uh, bag here, which I sometimes take to tournaments and things with me. I've got a little bit of stuff there, which my Star Wars Destiny stuff tucked away. There is the box which I uh, reviewed on the channel, which was for the other side from Weird Miniatures. I've got my terrain crate, which is my battlefield stuff that I use for um, for, for Vanguard. I've got a, a kind of a, a case there that's got all my X-Wing stuff in. I've got the original Blood Bowl, which I don't, I don't think I've ever really mentioned before. And then that's the box of my Dark Imperium. And then along the bottom there, you'll see there's a load of sort of just boxes. In these are all the bits of models <laughs> still to paint. I don't know if I dare open any of them now and show you, but um, 
You can see in here there is things like my Shade Spire stuff, my Star Wars Destiny stuff. Uh, there's a, sort of a number of uh, bits of unfinished miniatures, Walking Dead expansions. So yeah, there is plenty of stuff tucked away in here. But the idea is I like to try and keep it really tidy because I have to work here. So I work here when I work from home with my day job. And it's also, um, it just keeps it nice and tidy. So what we've also got here, so this is the bit you will normally see this shot. Uh, so just to give you an idea of the size of the space, if I turn around, this is how close to the wall I am. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's not, it's, not it's, it's a big room, don't get me wrong, but it's not, it's not a huge, big studio type thing. It's just a, uh, it's just a spare bedroom at my home. Um, so yeah, so that's, I guess that's the shot you see most often, maybe a bit tighter cropped in on there. So from a painting perspective, I've got, I've got one of these Citadel hobby boxes. Let me just try and do this one-handed. And inside here is pretty much all of the stuff I use most of the time. So there's a tray here with paints in that you can take out and pop them on the desk. And then inside here is bits of glue, brushes, wash pot. There's a little Citadel handle in there as well. Bits of boxes with sort of bits of cork and stuff for basin. Some corks I use for um, sort of mountain models on when I'm painting. Files, pin vice, um, bits of glue and stuff like that. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of, I'll pull my desk chair around from here and I'll sit at the table here painting. And then behind me, in these drawers, I've also got a lot of hobby stuff as well. So what it means is that everything's tidied away. It's portable if I want to take my paint and stuff with me. These are most of the paints that I use on 90% of my models. The ones in here are probably some older paints and probably a bit more kind of spe specialized for certain things. Certainly these old GW hex pots. I don't, don't use them so much these days, uh, but they are still usable. And then I've obviously got, this is, this is my box of the, uh, the Series S brushes that I've been using. So I've got a couple of, um, a couple of the, uh, the M series ones that I'm kind of testing at the minute. And then I've also got my, uh, my S series as well. And then in that white box over there is the stuff that uh, is for the giveaway. So if you haven't already seen the giveaway, check that out on the channel. So yeah, so I just find by keeping all of this stuff here, it forces me to keep the room tidy. It forces me to, to kind of keep it in a condition where I can just dive in and start playing or I can dive in and start filming. Uh, and it just all really, I feel like this is the kind of the best setup I've had now. Um, and it just works for me now, really. So yeah, that's the room. I hope you've enjoyed a bit of a, a tour around it. If you've got any questions, I've got the pictures there, I probably didn't show you. So these are, um, we've got uh, Boba Fett there. We've got a mixture of Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger as the Joker there. Uh, we've got the, uh, the alien queen there. And we've also got Darth Maul. Just some, uh, some pictures that I've got on the wall eventually. I think I'd like to kind of fill the rest of this wall with, uh, with some pictures as well. But yeah, that's the room, folks. Hope you've enjoyed a bit of a tour around it. And um, I'll see you in the next video.